Hi, everyone. It's great to be back at SecDev again to talk to you about uh, network attack services. This year, uh, my advisor, Dr. Chang, and I did some research on uh, compressing network attack services for better testing, better analysis for security purposes. So I'm going to give you an overview of what we're going to talk about, starting with a little bit of background, telling you why we did this research, how we did the research, looking at some examples, and how we evaluated it, and finally wrapping up with a discussion of our planned future work. So a little bit about me, computer science undergrad, Air Force Intelligence Officer for seven years, spent a good bit of that time teaching information warfare. After that, I did security testing, starting with compliance testing for the government, moving on to pen testing, and ultimately red teaming for the financial services industry. And I'm also a computer science PhD candidate at Clemson University in South Carolina. So the reason I'm telling you all of this is that this research was focused on, yes, new research, but also finding something that we could apply to current work. And I use the work we did last year and this work in my job on a regular basis. So let's talk about why we did it. Well, testing. We wanted to improve testing. Now, when I look at testing, I see the application of every possible technique to every possible entry point to an application or a network or whatever your test device or system is. So vulnerability scanners can actually cover a lot of these automatically, and that's great that they can do that. Um, if we look a little bit closer, many techniques just don't apply to certain points on the attack surface. You know, cross-site scripting only applies to web techniques. If the attack surface isn't web, it doesn't matter. So then you're left with all these other empty spaces that do apply, but a vulnerability scanner just isn't that good at or, or can't test at all. So we need to manual testing for that reason. Looking at it another way, I look at automatic scanners like hiring someone to build your house. Yeah, you can pick the flooring, maybe the paint colors, but you can't tell them how to do the work. You can't direct them. Meanwhile, I like to spend my time in this space, the manual testing space, which is like using a screwdriver and a hammer to turn every bolt and pound in every nail to be at that house built. And I use tools like Burp Proxy Suite for web testing, which I just love. Uh, pen testing with Metasploit or Nmap, tools like that. Well, what's missing is this middle ground. There's a gap of semi-automatic testing where we can have you know, the coverage of a scanner, but with the dedication and human accuracy and intuition of you know, manual testing. So that's what we're trying to bridge the gap here by providing some tools that will make it better. And last year, our work was focused on hosts so we clustered hosts that were similar together. So web servers would get put together, maybe some FTP servers. And then you could see, oh, look, there's an FTP server with SSH. Let's look at that. Really useful, but it only used port numbers and it focused on hosts. So it was limited with what it could do. Well, this year we changed the game and focused entirely on services. We added banner st strings to the mix so that we could actually get a better, different, more zoomed in viewpoint into the services and have better comparisons based on that information. It also fits better with software as, as a service uh, implementations because they're more service focused and less host focused. So our methodology was simply to cluster similar services together so that testers uh, could have an easier time of it. How do we do this? By capturing the data we wanted to cluster, processing it so the clustering algorithm could work with it, uh, computing the distance so we'd know what to cluster and what to keep apart, and then actually run it through the cluster algorithm and see how we did. So collecting network responses, the best way to do this is with a port scanner. A lot of those tools have service detection algorithms that let you uh, gather that banner information that we're going to need for this. Well, there's a challenge and the different tools return this data in different formats. And I have the three main tools we looked at for this study below. And let's look at Shodan's comma-separated values first. You can see the banner there in the middle starts with the first line of the HTTP response, the code in the text, 302 being a redirect, uh, 200 being OK, 404 not found, etc. Turning to census, OK, it's in JSON, not a problem. We can deal with that. But look at the banner. It doesn't have that code. It starts with content type. So it's completely different. And Nmap actually has a sophisticated service detection engine that determines what the service is and gives you, in English, the actual you know, type of service version if it knows it. So completely different tools. This leads us to 
believe that we need to use one tool for each clustering operation and stick with it. So when we picked our data set, we used the same one as last year for consistency. 13 organizations exported in Shodan with about 15,000 services. And this year we included the banner information so that we could use that in our clustering. So that's how we collected the network responses. Moving on to pre-processing the data, we wanted to address what we call the port number problem. And this is like, look at 80 and 443, okay? They, they usually host HTTP and HTTPS, very similar protocols. But if you look at those numbers, they're not similar. And the strings, um, 80 and 443, they don't compare. So they're far apart and they're not similar, even though the services are similar. But we wanted to fix this so that we could make use of the protocol. And how we did that was with a feature in Nmap called the Nmap Services file. And what the Nmap Services file is used for is to prioritize services so that when you ask Nmap to scan the top 1,000 ports, it knows what the top 1,000 ports are. Well, we used it simply because it provides a correlation, a relationship between uh, port numbers and the services, 21 FTP, 22 SSH. So we were able to look up the port number and actually get um, a string of the service, which means a lot more when you're doing a comparison. With that, we moved to um, another, our next problem, which was that banner text is inconsistent. So even in the same tool, different types of services return different information in their banners. Well, we just took the first line and we went with it because it turns out that that being that inconsistency actually helps us differentiate between different services. Because look, all web servers kind of look the same. FTP, very similar. And then SNMP down there, that Tanberg looks different. So they group naturally together. So this just worked in our favor and we took advantage of it. So now that we've pre-processed, we wanted to compute the distance between services and we used the jar of similarity. It returns a value between zero and one where one is identical. It is uh, based on uh, matching characters and their transpositions. So if uh, the characters match and you only have to flip a few characters, you'll have a higher score than something that's completely different. Empty strings are identical and they do get a one score. I had to check this out to make sure. And here's some examples of our previous data that we looked at um, that uh, are computed with a jar of similarity. You can see the identical strings, one, the web and FTP that are similar got in the 70s, whereas different types of services scored down in the 40s. Likewise, with our banners, you see the similar HTTP and HTTPS are over 90, whereas the different services scored in the 70s. That's enough of a stratification to where you know, I can use that to cluster and return really useful results. Part of our computation was to weight these. And we simply took a weighted average through many iterations, we found that using 75% weight on the protocol was the best way to go. And we subtracted it from one because the Python library we use needed distance, not similarity. So that was an easy thing to do. Next, we cluster. We use sklearn's agglomerative clustering algorithm. And there were three main parameters that I'd like to point out. First, the affinity, as we mentioned, is pre-computed in this case. The distance threshold. This is something that we iterated through, and this is the number that tells it, you know, at what point you cluster or do you push to the side. And then the linkage. Linkage can be either single uh, for nearest neighbor or complete. And we went with average just because, again, through multiple iterations, this worked best for our purposes. But the program that we used um, works with any of these. So our case studies, we looked at the university part of our data set, a thousand services. Um, we looked at two specific cases, SSH and HTTP, both with just under 300 services for us to cluster. So let's dive into SSH. Okay, so here's what we found when we clustered SSH. Uh, the biggest cluster was Ubuntu SSH at version seven. And then we found we had a few systems of version six too. Another cluster was just OpenSSH, various versions, um, not Ubuntu, but there were several servers in this. And then we found two Dropbear servers. And then, of course, the outliers, various SSH servers. So what do we do with this? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is with these clusters all split out like they are, it makes it really easy for me to look for 
version numbers that are a little different, Google them, see if there's any CVEs for them, see if there's any vulnerabilities. Next, I'm going to look for the older versions of SSH that are inconsistent with the rest of the network. Why? Because, well, maybe they didn't patch the stuff on their other servers either. So there's a chance that they might be vulnerable and they might have other vulnerable services on that host. And finally, if I can look at those banners and determine that some of those devices are in fact network devices and not just plain servers, I can do some tailored password spraying with known default accounts uh, to try to get access to them. And then I can be more quiet with my password spraying and avoid locking out accounts or being detected if I'm doing red teaming. So that's how I look at SSH. Now HTTP, I'm not going to show you the raw output from the program because there were a lot of clusters, but this is what it came out with. Again, we're looking at that first line in Shodan, which has the responses, the response codes, and this allows us to make some interesting observations. First, the majority of the systems were redirects, very common on HTTP because they're redirecting you most times to SSL to TLS secure site. Well, there's a way we can check to see if a WAF is doing the redirecting, and there might be a way to bypass. Some WAFs only redirect the root case, and if you put anything after the URL uh, as a path, they may ignore it. Well, this is an easy check we can do with our proxy suite, and it's worth taking a look at. Next, I see that there is a uh, couple of typographical errors in uh, some of the responses. This leads me to believe custom software, and that means there might be custom bugs and zero days that no one else has discovered. Definitely taking a close look at those. And at these potential admin sites, non-standard HTTP port usually means non-public, usually means more interesting. 400 and 500, something went wrong. There's a misconfiguration on the server, and I definitely want to take a look at those. And lastly, I want to look at the servers that responded with 200 because that means they're going to just let me view the page. I want to make sure there's no password forms or any other sensitive data to make sure that sensitive data isn't being sent unencrypted. So that's how I'd look at HTTP. Now we reviewed our entire algorithm uh, using typical measures that you'd use to look at clusters, but what we found is that they were trivial, meaning that yes, the more homogenous the clusters were, the better the scores were. What we found worked best was does this break it out in such a way that's useful for the tester? So, you know, it was uh, not very scientific, but it was something that just worked best for us. And that's the whole point of this, to improve manual testing. So what did we get? Well, we got a lot of improved performance out of this. And some things that we did was we found out that we were calculating similarities between, you know, it's order n squared for all of these. And with 15,000 services, that's a huge number. Well, we were able to only compute the unique ones and then use multiprocessing and a lookup. And it was super fast, much, much faster to get those similarities. Then by using SK Learn's uh, agglomerate clustering uh, function, things were much faster this year than the one that we wrote by hand last year. We were able to reduce the time to cluster this data set of over 15,000 services from 24 minutes to 27 seconds. And that's including the fact that we were clustering uh, with banner information. Uh, the string comparison is a lot more complex. So as a result, you can run your uh, calculations many times, iterate through the values, and find out what works best for your particular data set and your particular test case. Future work. We're looking at other attack services. Can we do this with web pages? Can we look at the parameters inside web pages? How about social engineering? If you're going to do a phishing attack, wouldn't it be great to be able to cluster profiles of people that might be more susceptible to phishing, save you time, and make it less obvious what you were doing? And finally, I'd like to add neural networks into the mix. Instead of just clustering, let's train a neural network to find and emulate that uh, unique Thing that a tester has, that instinct, so that we can make uh, better decisions and, and help automate some of those decisions. And with that, thank you so much for your time. It's been great to present, and I really appreciate it. Have a great day.